Here are five lessons we can learn from the bear market. 1. Statistics can be manipulated, so framing is everything. For example, for the first half of the year, the stock market finished the worst in 52 years. But this is only one way to look at a six-month period if you're looking at the stretch from January to June. However, if you're not so picky about the months of the year, then at the end of February 2009, the S&P 500 actually finished down 41% from just six months earlier. As an investor, you're in the game of making money, so do not look at news websites to give you ideas about investments. They're playing a different game where they're trying to get your clicks and views. So being more of an independent thinker can help you make better financial decisions rather than just looking at headlines. Two, not all sectors or types of stocks behave the same. Value stocks have performed pretty well this year compared to growth stocks, for example. Also, high quality dividend growth stocks also performed fairly well. For example, if we compare a value fund, like the Vanguard Value Index Fund, to a technology ETF, such as the ARK Innovation Fund, we can see there is a huge difference over the last seven months or so. The value fund is only down about 9.5%, but ARKK is down about 50.5%. 3. Alternative investments don't necessarily hedge against conventional markets. For example, a lot of people thought that Bitcoin would be a safe haven. It would also be a store of value and it could hedge against higher inflation. However, as it turns out, of course, none of that is true. And a lot of people, including myself, had to learn the hard way. That's not to say it's not a good long-term investment because we don't know that yet. But all we can learn from this bear market is that Bitcoin is behaving more like a risk asset rather than a hedge against financial uncertainty or higher inflation. Four, diversification can help reduce your losses, but it typically doesn't turn a losing period into a winning one. A lot of investors own bonds, for example, to mitigate the ups and downs of the stock market. But so far this year, bond prices are down just like stocks, although not down as much. Real estate is another asset class that can use to diversify an overall investment portfolio. However, like most other assets right now, uh, real estate prices are also dropping, both in Canada and the US. And finally, number five, bear markets are a healthy and normal part of the stock market. In fact, we should expect to see a bear market about once every six years or so. And if we accept this as just a universal event that happens once in a while, instead of trying to change it or repress it, then it will not be seen as an obstacle, but simply as an experience, and maybe even see it as an opportunity to buy high quality stocks at cheaper valuations. And here's a bonus lesson, and this comes from portfolio manager Ben Carlson. In his book, he writes that over a long period of time, your investment performance will mainly be derived from how you handle corrections, bear markets, and market crashes. And I think this is very true. And just to add on to this, I also think your investment performance will not just depend mainly on how you handle corrections and bear markets like right now, but also how you handle bull markets and euphoria. For example, not buying growth stocks with really expensive multiples can actually save you a lot of money. And it means that your return, your expected returns in the future will be higher if you don't give in to jumping on the bandwagon when everybody else is piling in it. It's all about psychology and having a stable, consistent mindset and having a plan before a bear market even starts or a bull market even starts, that can get you through the entire market cycle and it'll make you a better long-term investor. So what can we do about this lesson practically? Well, we know that when there is a bear market, one of the things is that the market usually hits a bottom and starts going back up again when people least expect it. In fact, if we look at the S&P 500's total return, whenever there was a 15% or more decline in the market, and then we looked at what the market did 12 months after, the average return was 55%, which is, of course, a lot higher than the average return in general of the S&P 500 on an annual basis. And this is because the further the market falls, the more chance it has to recover and go back up. So a reasonable question is when would be a good time to enter the market now? Because we know the market is down at least 15%. In fact, it was actually down 20% at one time 
uh, this year. But now it went back up a little bit, so it's down around 18% or so. So is now in July the best time to be buying stocks? Well, as I mentioned in previous videos, I've been pretty bearish on the market overall for the last couple of months. Uh, that's why I have right now uh, shorted 100 units of QQQ, which basically tracks the NASDAQ 100. And by shorting this ETF, I basically make money uh, when the QQQ trust goes down. And this is just temporary for me. I'm just shorting this as a way to hedge against further market decline. However, if I see on the weekly chart here, it goes above the green line, which is a 10 uh, week moving average, then I might consider uh, buying it back and closing my position. But as of right now, this is a pretty downward looking chart. So I am keeping my hedge for now, which is why I have a negative 100 position on this. But otherwise, I'm still holding everything else in my portfolio. And I'm just waiting for QQQ to uh, basically hit a bottom and go back up. So we'll have to see. It's better to be a little bit late catching the start of a bull market than to be too early timing the bottom of a bear market. I made the mistake of thinking April was the bottom and I went very bullish and heavily into the stock market. Of course, that didn't go so well as the market continued to go down. So that's why in my margin account, I am down 38.6% so far this year. The other thing I'm looking at is the inflation rate in the United States. I want to have better confirmation that it has peaked before I become bullish again in the stock market. And so far, it doesn't look like it is trending down. So it could be another month or two before things start to turn around, but I'll keep you guys posted on what I'm doing over time. So thanks a lot for watching. Happy investing and until next time.